having made. Also, I'm betrayed by the fact that I'm here walking on the ground that Mr. Justice Jackson walked on. He was a superb lawyer, a superb human being. Uh, Mr. Justice Frankfurt always said that he was by far the best writer on the Supreme Court. Uh, several times he would stop me when I was uh, going back to the judges' chambers, and I would really have a real conversation. I congratulate this uh, community for nurturing and using such a fine human being. I really enjoyed this morning. Uh, I must say a couple of times that indeed, if those four bright young men were uh, having the ability to tell us what was going on, maybe we would have done even a better job. <laughs> uh, I was somewhat uh, disappointed to hear the judgment that uh, the decision as to what the decree was going to be was probably already resolved long before we argued Brown versus two. Uh, I spent a long summer working on that. And I guess it's clear that Brown one and Brown two were not only very important cases, but any time you have a doubt as to yourself, can you imagine what the United States would be facing today if that case had come out of the contract? There were five cases, each of which had said that segregation was constitutional. And then the skill started, and we had families that uh, uh, you know, got involved. And I remember Mr. Marshall would say something about the South Carolina case. You know, we come down here and we argue, and then we get on the plane and go back to New York and Philadelphia. But the people that are the plaintiffs, they're the ones that have to stay there and really uh, uh, struggle when you have the local people who think that you're doing something wrong. Now, as I said before, I think Brown's a wonderful case. I think the, the uh, decree, uh, I wish they had said that uh, the name plaintiffs would have been admitted forthwith. I know today the suggestion was made where well, they had to get over uh, and try to keep down the crowd from jumping up and down. But then how do you explain the Little Rock case, which is only about three or four years later, where you called in federal troops and uh, Mr. Jess and, and President Eisenhower finally sent them there, and you had black kids who went to Little Rock High School under guard. So the idea that you show statesmanship by saying for many years nothing would happen. We also suffered through the uh, uh, situation in Virginia where they actually closed down some of the schools. Now, uh, why hasn't Brown done exactly what we hoped it would do. Now we never asked, I don't think you would find any brief filed by the Legal Defense Fund, it said that we want to uh, have integration. We also said, and we, all, we always said, that what we wanted was to desegregate school system, not that there would be integration. And so there is this really commitment, and maybe that's the vision that the court had, namely that American people are basically very decent people. Once they see the issue, there may be some picketing, there may be some a few rights, but basically the American people ultimately would do what's right. I think that is why this country is what it is today, and I'm pretty sure it's that way largely in part because we had people like Chief Justice Earl Warren, uh, Mr. Justice uh, Robert Jackson, and the others that perform on that court. But we still
still have a long way to go. And I think that the person that put it best is Mrs. Justice Ruth Ginsburg. When she was asked recently at a speech in uh, Fordham, why have women done much better than blacks, even though uh, women uh, didn't get the right to vote in the Constitution until 50 years after blacks did. And her answer was really simple. The difference is that women have husbands, they have sons, they have brothers, they have fathers, and therefore they get to know them. And what we all have to strive for is what Alexander Hamilton said he wanted, namely that we will be recognized as Americans. Thank you.